Hi, my name is Luke and I am an aspiring musician that's looking to work in a music industry. And I take part in a musical project with Carol Cell, which is Brighton and it's being funded by a national charity called New Music. And I'm talking to Charlotte Kleber about how she got a job working in the music industry and any advice and tips she um going to give to me. I'll be asking a couple of questions to you Tyler. So where did you grow up and what was your relationship with music like growing up? So uh, I grew up in Blackpool in the in the northwest. It's a little seaside town and I guess I had a pretty tumultuous relationship with music growing up. There was not a massive scene growing up at the time. There was no small venues um, but we did have some great musicians come through like Jack White and the White Stripes. Royal Blood, uh, and we infamously had uh, The Who as well, and many other bands. Um, but growing up, there wasn't really space for small gigs, so I never really experienced like small hometown bands. I know a lot has changed since then, but uh, it's been a weird time growing up with music. Blackpool was not a hub for it, and our closest place was probably Manchester. Okay, and what kind of music do you like? My music taste predominantly lies in like rock and metal, um, but I don't like to stick to a genre a lot of the time because with things like Spotify now, we're so open to music. We can pick so many different options. One day I can be listening to bands like Of Mice and Men and Suicide Silence, but then the next day I am honestly listening to Little Mix and RuPaul's Drag Race and musicals because, you know, explore and adventure because that's what we can do as kids. Okay, and how did it get in the music industry? I started actually on a general blog with my sixth form and we started writing about what interests us, our hobbies and all I could think was music and then hopefully when I was old enough tattoos but I knew the only thing I could really do at the time was music so I started writing about it, opinion pieces and then I realised I could start writing reviews and that grew and we got accredited um, press passes to Slam Dunk Festival in Leeds so I started interviewing bands like Creeper, Rome and Boston Manor and then I went on using those to start Turn It Up Louder. Then uh, I went to uni for a public relations and marketing degree. I started my degree, then I came on a sandwich year down to London to work at Warner Music. It was a very competitive process to get on those internships. Um, and I really do think my work on Turn It Up Louder helped me because I was interviewing against some really uh, skilled competitors um, and some of them are my friends now luckily but I think Turn It Up Louder did help that and then when working at Warner they said hey Marshall Records needs a publicist do you want to go and do that job and I couldn't really say no you know Marshall's a heritage brand here in the UK 60 years next year and I'd had the book of loud growing up I, I knew Jim Marshall's work so I was like yeah I'm gonna go see what that's about yeah that's the book I got that for my, I got the Book of Loud for my 15th or 16th birthday I believe um, and when I even first interviewed for the job at Marshall my mum went, remember when we got you the Book of Loud? Because uh, I'm a very high believer of fate um, so it did feel like a full circle moment for sure but it, I mean I love that book, it's a great little coffee table book and uh, I still have my coffee. <laughs> What's your favourite thing about music? A music. It's like a driving passion for me ever since I first started out in that solo about two years old. I mean that's like the, the starting point and then just went on from there and started joining in a band that I found in 2010. Uh, when I got into the dance about 20 years ago in 2016, um, it was no surprise that Carousel came at some point in the years. Um, it was a funny times day um, and that, that's um, when my whole life has changed really and now working with Carousel. What do you like about working in the music industry? Working in the music industry is entertaining, it's exciting. Well, I guess not in a pandemic filled year, but we get to go to gigs and festivals and you meet so many different people from different walks of life. You get to hear their stories and their music their passions and it's I'm very much a person that likes to know people and get to know them so hearing what one artist has written about one day to then a completely different artist the next day but also like where other publicists have come from or heads of labels because we've all thought to be where we are you know it's a competitive industry but I wouldn't let it like put you off at all I think it just drives you more than anything yeah I guess going to live music is probably the best part of the job 
getting to hang out with people, but also getting to create moments for those artists as well, because you really are making an impact and hopefully helping them grow, because we want to see them play in O2s and Wembley's one day. Okay, that's interesting, um, but what does a publicist do? No two days are the same as a publicist. Most of the time I am emailing your favourite magazines and journalists going, please, please listen to this album, please get us some coverage for this band, I'll be pitching new ideas, feature articles, you know, what, what makes this artist stand out against another and you know, sometimes that involves you sitting with an artist for a few hours and really digging deep. Sometimes it's listening to the lyrics and hearing what they have to say and you have to mirror that in a press release so you've got to feel a genuine connection to the music you're working on I feel. Other days I can cr be creating resources for them, helping them uh, grow their following. Some of our artists are completely oblivious to TikTok but I'm more than happy to help them learn a few viral dances if I need to. There's just so much to do and anything that lands in my inbox I'm happy to deal with. Creating gifts, you know, if they if they decide I want an Instagram filter, I'll help them make an Instagram filter. That's what I'm here to do. But more than anything, we want your music to be heard. That's all the publicists want, is people to listen to that album, know the, the amount of work that went into it, the power, the passion, and really help communicate that. Okay, and um, where did you find out that your job is a job. It was actually in sixth form, so I was studying uh, business and media studies separately because they were like my two favourite subjects. I was really passionate about different medium magazines, which came to my blog, music, film, TV. I just wanted to be creative, but I really liked the side of business that made me kind of think about promotion. And it came to the point where I had to pick unis and I was being told, oh, but you're too smart for media, but you're not smart enough for business. And I was in a really weird limbo land of not really knowing what to do and thinking oh maybe I'll take a year out maybe I won't go to uni I weighed up so many different options and my business teacher went have you heard of marketing and I was like what's that and she was like advertising and she took the time uh, to sit down and t tell me all about uh, marketing and then under that PR and I realized that those people that are in my inbox every day sending me albums and tour news were actually publicists and there was a name for them and that was a job I could actually do full time and it wasn't just someone sending an email on the side of a job because at first I had no clue about it and it took me reading thousands of emails and going to uni to really like get an angle and a, an idea for what, what my career entailed and what I wanted to do. Okay, well what does a typical day in a job look like? In the office, very differently to at home. Uh, at the minute, it's get up, get out of bed, and make sure I get changed because you don't want to sit in your pyjamas all day. Um, you know, we do a lot of Zoom calls with our bands and managers, checking on everyone, you know. It's a hard time for us all, so, you know, having those day-to-day -day relationships where I've seen each other's faces and hearing each other's voices is really nice. Um, at the minute, I'm just about to launch the Pressed Miko album campaign tomorrow, so this today was a lot of calls with management and setting up podcasts and a few uh, feature interviews for them. But again, it varies. If I'm mid-campaign, I could be just reminding people the album exists. Where can we be featured in like a top 10 pop punk artist you need to listen to? Or where can we like market ourselves further? Where do we need to fill a gap? In a normal year, we'd also have tour press. So I'd be sending out lists to people going, do you want to come to this show? Let's review, let's photograph it. Hopefully getting reviews and giving those artists feedback as well, which is really great to see. Um, but again, every, every day varies, but typically it's very busy, lots of emails and lots of music to listen to. Okay, and um, ever since the pandemic started, how has it changed? Quite substantially since the pandemic started. I've worked uh, for Marshall for just short of two years now, and most of that work has been under the pandemic and most of the album cycle. Our first album was uh, released by Therapy, their greatest hits album on March 13th and then we went into lockdown on the 23rd. For our artists it was a really hard time, we lost all our touring, we lost all our festivals, all our live opportunities, but bands like Presto Mico, um, Thousand Thoughts, they lost their opportunities to go into the studio, they lost their opportunities to go make music and just be in a room together in general, so it was a really hard time for everyone and I think that then fed back onto us, you know. We had to start challenging ourselves to listen to our artists even more than we were doing. Where can we help them? Where can we put on a live stream? 
or encourage them to cre create new content. We basically had to all support each other, but in that process, we also lost some of our favorite magazines in print, like Kerrang, Planet Rock Magazine, Q, um, and it's been a real shame. Some of those are still operating online, but others aren't. But this meant we were losing opportunities for our smaller acts in print. And when you have to explain to someone, you know, we really want this single out there, but it's not going to be in a print form, we can't get you in this magazine, it's so hard because these bands, just like us, have dreams, and some of those dreams are as simple as to be in Kerrang! print. Now we don't know if we'll see the magazine return, um, and I know it's a bit, a lot of people in the industry are big fans of it, so I hope we do, but those changes have been substantial. We've lost a lot of music industries already. Uh, music <laughs> We've lost a lot of uh, music venues already um, and I'm sure there's more MVT are doing an amazing amount of work to really shine lights on these venues that are struggling and Marshall have been there to support it and have fundraised with our charity t-shirts as well. Uh, I guess it's been a harder time we've not been able to go sit in an office and brainstorm uh, campaigns together because over Zoom things are just still a little difficult sometimes to communicate um, we really are trying though as an industry and I guess my job specifically has changed but you know it's challenged me to challenge our bands and make them, not make them, but encourage them to make new content, encourage them to think outside the box, where can we push a campaign, what can we do with this single uh, and ultimately you know this isn't going to go away overnight and we might have to innovate a little bit more and our artists will as well but whatever we see it's creative and it's great to see that artists are still having the, the passion that they do. Okay, so what do you like most about your job? Uh, hmm. That's a good question, actually. I, I, there's a lot I enjoy about my job. I have a great team around me and at Marshall. They're a very creative family, so I'm really like proud to be part of their, their team. And I really enjoy working with the bands and doing my job because I like to have an impact and help those artists grow and develop, you know. Every time we get a win for those artists, when we get them on a new podcast or a new radio show that we haven't, I genuinely get excited. Um, and that's anything from a big magazine to rock sound to blogs that are like turning it up louder, you know. Everything is a win for artists like us and in independent labels, you know, we're not all major label artists, we don't have millions to spend on campaigns so you know there's so much hard work that goes into everything we do and that I think brings me the most joy knowing how hard I am working to help develop these artists but also I really enjoy discovering new music myself so often I bring new artists to the table and we'll have a really cool band launching later this year that I can't talk about just yet but I'm so excited because I saw them grow uh, in a local scene up north so to bring them into the label and into the Marshall family has been like such a moment personally for me because I know I'm going to have an impact because I think they're the last thing they expected in a pandemic where they've not been able to record any music for over a year is uh, is the fact they got signed. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably one of my proudest moments so far. What one piece of advice that you would have found useful when you were studying out in music PR? Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. It's so... Um, I've, I hated when people used to tell me, oh no, but it's a really competitive industry, oh, but you're from Blackpool, oh, and the other thing is you're a girl, because it's about, it can be a male-dominated industry and things are quickly changing, which is really great to see. You know, it takes a new generation of people to inspire the next generation, and there's women around me now in the music industry and people from outside of London and all different walks of life that are really inspiring me as people as I'm still growing in the music industry and I know that has an impact on our younger generation um, and the last thing you want to be told is no you can't do it because really if you put your like hard work and dedication in and you're passionate about a job you can do it a hundred percent I really just have no doubt in that and I'm seeing people work their hardest and get the opportunities they really deserve um, and that's what this industry is about it rewards the deserving Okay, uh, what skills do you think are most important in your job? Communication is the like utmost important skill as a uh, as a PR and publicist. You know, you're out talking to people every day uh, via email, uh, via phone, via Zoom at the minute, taking them out for lunches, all sorts. So you really have to be 
a good communicator you don't have to be confident at it you know a lot of people come into this industry and aren't you know aren't always wanting to pick up the phone or see someone face to face but you really become settled and get to know people and it gets so friendly there's a really great network of other PRs that I know I can bounce off of and you know the journalists in the room when you're at a gig to go and speak to them you know it becomes a very friendly industry and I know one of the biggest things with moving to a lot of the time the jobs are in London like moving to London can be so difficult it's on your own and it's something I had to do um, but the publicists and the journalists and everyone I've met along the way are now some of my best friends because everyone is actually so warm and friendly and most of us aren't from London so we've had to experience this every time and I think that is probably the most key skill otherwise be creative be nice you know, just be an all round good person because it really reflects in your work and your attitudes and it really helps you get places um, just being a generally good person. Okay, well what tip do they have for networking and meeting the right people? Don't be afraid to just be you. I always thought getting into music that I'd have to have to blend in with everyone before I went into rock and I very quickly jumped into working with the rock genre. Um, very unapologetically so as well you know don't be sorry for what you wear or don't be sorry for how you act just be the best form of you go and introduce yourself politely to people myself and other people were here to know you and know other people you know if you see me on LinkedIn send me a request send me a message like if you have if people ever want advice I am here to help um, because I've been in the position myself as well so okay and what would your job would be like in about five years from now? It's going to be interesting in five years. I think because of the pandemic, we saw a boom in radio again, when we've seen that as a, a medium that might have been falling a little bit in the past. We've also seen a large boom in podcast listening and digital mediums like uh, digital magazines rather than just a blogosphere or just a print magazine uh, i think we'll just see these even more i think more and more podcasts are coming up each day you know there's amazing podcasts like we wear black and sapnin that are putting music to the forefront and showing that podcasts don't have to be something that are just sports related or news related it can be generally of interest to other people um and there's always a podcast out there for someone and there's just going to be even more of that in the future. I also think, yeah, digital magazines. I also think we'll see a few more radio shows popping up. Um, many other radios are putting out new shows and new content. They're stepping up because they can create at home and they've learned that. So now, you know, I think in five years time, the industry is still going to be booming we're going to see new mediums and it's going to be very digital heavy and digital focused for sure luke uh what jobs in the music industry w would you like to do what i would like to do is um tt music to the next generations really that's what i want to do because uh, once i am um, experienced in music i guess i teach that to younger generations and it's just helping them out like as a teacher assistant at school so but it's something will be music so yeah that's what i want to do so thank you to both new music at the for making this video possible